Well, about an hour's worth more work, and here we are. Got the engine out. Um, trans. Went ahead and took the HVAC box off. Um, not sure if I can fit the Suburban one in the dash or not, but that's going to be my goal. Um, I don't know as far as size. I really don't know if it's going to work or not. But if I can do that, that's going to free up a ton of room under the hood of this thing. And uh, with the Hydro Boost swap and then getting the HVAC system out of the engine compartment. Basically, my goal is, is to make this thing so I can work on it for one and make it a nice, clean, kind of, I'd like it to look factory. I know it's not factory but kind of have a factory appearance to it um, I mean she's a rough truck it's not perfect but um, I love the idea of it looking original I don't really want it to stand out you know look really out of place in the truck um, I'll probably put the Vortec cover back on it I will run a cold air intake of some kind but I'll paint the tube black so it kind of blends in Put a lidded box in it, um, just to try to make it look nice. And my plans could change. It's at this point, it's kind of all up in the air, just getting started with this. But um, got a lot of work ahead, but uh, not bad for about oh maybe six hours total time, just working on it after I get home from work and. Um, as the wife allows me to. I know anybody else that's went through this process understands that that battle. But uh, over here's the tired and dead four cylinder. Um, originally, I'd thought about running. Um, I don't know if it'll focus with the flash turned on or not. There we go. Um, I had originally considered putting the 5.3 in front of the 5 speed, but um, I was thinking it had an NV3500 in it, and which it could have had, but I think that's at the V6, and I could be way off. But I know that the S10s were offered with an NV3500, but I don't remember what criteria it had to meet to have that particular transmission in it. But um, that's a Muncie 5 speed. And uh, I may may put that in something else. We'll see. Transmission worked fine, so um, wasn't any issues with that. But uh, the engine, boat anchor. So uh, so yeah, it's going to be pretty sweet to see this thing under the hood of that S10. And um, I am considering putting a cowl induction hood on it because I know that there's some people have had issues with alternator clearance and um, different things like that but uh, I plan to put the engine as far back in the engine compartment as possible um, with reason within reason to be able to get the bell housing bolts things like that out but I'm really hoping to be able to use the stock manifolds and I've got a feeling it's not going to work without some modifications which being cast iron I can cut them add extension pipes, um, turn the flanges different ways, whatever it takes to get it in there. Um, just got to heat the cast iron up red hot, get my pipe fitted, and burn it in while the cast iron's about as hot as you can get it. Um, and it will hold. Um, seen it done. I've repaired a few cast iron manifolds. So... Um, that's the plan at this point and I do want to try to eliminate the steering gearbox I'd like to take and at least try my rack and pinion yes my shop is a disaster I don't get down here much but this project I decided I would start get going on it I've been wanting to work on it um, I want to try this rack and pinion this is out of my 94 Camaro Z28 um, I'd like to try it. I don't know. I haven't measured anything as far as length to see if it's even remotely close. I don't know what the 
width of the car is as far as if it's even comparable but this is another project that I have um, looking really or really looking forward to getting this thing going um, bought it out of Kentucky in last January and funds haven't really been where I'd like them to be the cars really really clean um, I know I'm kind of going off on a rabbit trail here but um, there is a little bit of surface rust in that uh, strut tower but I mean it is literally wire wheel it off throw some primer on it and paint it this car is extremely extremely solid I took the body mount bolts out of the cradle with a ratchet I mean there was no impact involved took the ratchet on or cracked it loose the ratchet and spun them out with my fingers I mean the top or the tunnels kind of beat up whoever had put the engine in that is in it or was in it um, went through the top I mean there's definitely visual signs that definitely you can't deny um, it went in from the top but I mean this thing is just as solid as you're gonna find and I live in Northwest Ohio so to see something that is this clean I mean look at them brake lines and fuel lines I mean there's a little bit of surface rust on those right there but I mean I had a 94 Z before this car and it was originally well I don't know where it was originally from but I bought it in Michigan and uh, it was not even remotely close to as nice as this car. I mean, there's some surface rust right there. Nothing extensively beyond repair by any standard. I mean, this thing, as far as I'm concerned, is just about 100% rust free compared to what I'm used to working on. But this is a LT1 T56 manual car. This engine, I've never heard it run. I bought the car non-running. I knew it didn't run when I bought it. Um, now, if I'd have tried starting it, it would have run, but it's hurt. Um, it's got a bolt somehow on this intake valve. A bolt is between the head and the valve. Don't ask me how it got in there. I have not a clue. Because it's the furthest, it's not the furthest cylinder back, but it's one forward of the furthest back cylinder. I don't know if it come through the intake or I, I just, I don't know. This engine's been apart at some point. Um, it's got 1 6 ratio comp cams, roller rockers on it. It's got aftermarket pistons in it, different things like that. Um, but uh, they originally told me that it had a bent valve when I bought it, so I knew there was issues with it, but um, I did end up pulling the heads off of it. That push rod on cylinder 7 actually was snapped in half. I only found half of it. I didn't find the other half of it. And I'm guessing what happened, I don't know if I can get you zoomed in here, but if you look at that head gasket down in there, I did not damage the head gasket. The head gasket was like that when I took it apart. And if you look, I'll try to get to one that's not torn out. See those holes there? Push rods go through those. And both number seven and number eight both look like that. And Let's see if I can get in here. Sorry about the camera. And um, let's see, we got seven and eight, and four and six. Both, I don't know, five, six, seven, and eight. Excuse me, I gotta get my brain working. All have the head gaskets torn out on the push rods, only on the intake side. Now, the only thing I can figure is, roll these around out of the way, the only thing that I can figure is it was a missed gear. Getting after it like a moron, and uh, yeah, missed the gear, she didn't like it, 
push rods deflected they're not bent obviously the one is broken the other three are not bent um, they roll true on the table I mean there's no deflection noticeable in them currently but um once I got to that point I pulled the drain plug on it bunch of water pulled the oil filter off the oil filter was completely full of water now, I don't know it did not appear to be antifreeze it appeared to be water now how why I have no idea and uh, but one thing phone's dying one thing I'm not real sure of is if there's a chance that it come from the water to oil cooler I don't know if the brick and that's went bad it's definitely a possibility but anyways I know I got off on a wild goose chase there but uh this is another project I have this is a buddy of mine I used to work with 72 Chevy got to put an engine in it um, got a 72 350 got double hump heads on it um, gonna go in here the lighting's not very good my flash turned off turbo 350 we're gonna have that gone through um, but we need to get that put together he just bought these wheels and tires and I stuck them on here just so we could kind of see what it looked like and overall pretty decently clean truck she's got some rust and stuff but he wants to go through it fix it up but for now we're gonna get a running so he can cruise it this summer and have some fun with it and uh, when we get some more money and some more time we'll get after the body on it but so yeah um, probably making anybody that's gonna watch this seasick but um, I'm not gonna guarantee videos very often I've got a lot of projects outside of the shop but this is one I'm really excited about I've kind of when I've had a little bit of free time I've kind of pieced things together on it it's been sitting for about a year now but uh 77 GMC frame two-wheel drive 1500 well uh, C 1500 it is uh, got an 84 GMC cab on it off of a four-wheel drive but uh, that is a 93 12 valve Cummins it is a VE pump it's turned up a little bit it's, pumps been rebuilt it's got brand new injectors in it runs really really nice um, it's a short bed truck it is a single track currently but it's got a get drag five speed behind it which for what I'm gonna do with it be perfect I'm not planning on towing monstrous loads with it or anything like that. I will pull my car trailer with it, but outside of that, probably just a ripper. Go have fun with. Power to weight ratio is going to be pretty wicked in it, and traction is going to be a major problem, I have a feeling. But um, this is the engine that's going in the 72. And then I've got a whole stack of engines. That's a 69 Corvette. 350 with a got a 69 350 Z or 69 Z28 350 cam in it so it's figured at in back in them days 350 horse 350 that is supposed to go or the plan of that is to go in our 85 Chevy Dually that's our sled truck um, haven't had that thing on the track in about five years but that's at some point we got the engine got it put together and uh get that thing put in it and we got a built turbo 400 with a um, reverse manual valve body it's got trans brake stuff in it um, should be a pretty sweet setup but anyways I'm gonna get off here and uh, go home and help put the kids to bed and we'll see you the next video